Hi, boys and girls. Today we're going to start a new unit and we're going to focus on a brand new question. As always, when we start a new unit, we are going to notice and wonder about the question and then about our new text. Our new focus question is, where does nourishing food come from? We've talked about how food nourishes our body and we've talked about how food nourishes a community. Now we're going to ask the question, where does our nourishing food come from? In these pictures, you can see some people who work in fields and on farms and in different types of gardens to pick the food that we grow. So there's lots of different people who have to work together to grow the nourishing food for our body. This can happen on farms, on orchards, in gardens, in lots of different places. It takes a lot of planning and a lot of people to grow the nourishing food for our bodies. As you can see in some of these pictures, the settings of where our food is being grown can be different. Different nourishing food need different types of settings to grow. Some food need dry soil, some food need really dark rich soil. Some food takes a lot of people to pick and some food takes just one person to pick. In these pictures, you can see all the different people who work hard to pick the food that you grow. Sorry, that is grown for our bodies. All of this nourishing food comes from the earth and grows in nice, rich soil. In the springtime, families often plant things at their houses in their own gardens. Are you growing th anything at your house in your garden? Is someone in your family growing anything that you think is exciting or pretty? By the end of the summer, if you're growing a vegetable, hopefully your vegetable will be ready to be picked and eaten. Sometimes you can plant tomato plants or peppers. They're pretty easy to grow in a backyard garden. But bigger fruits and vegetables like mangoes or corn take bigger trees or fields to grow a lot of them all at once. We're going to read a story today called The Vegetables You Eat, and it will give us a little bit of understanding about the vegetable and where exactly they come from. Before we start reading the book, I want you to know these four new words that will help you have a better understanding in our text. The first word is nutritious. The word nutritious is similar to the word nourishing. Things that are nutritious nourish our body. A botanist is a person or a scientist who studies plants. Mr. Akil, the person who's been visiting you in Ms. Escarpler's class, is a botanist and he loves to study plants. A botanist knows a lot of facts about what helps plants grow and what groups these um, vegetables and plants are in. Did you know that vegetables are plants? Two types of plants can, sorry, there are two types or categories or groups that plants can be in. The first one is called a perennial. A perennial is a plant or a flower or a vegetable or a fruit that returns each growing season. For example, there are apricot trees at Lakeland that will grow apricots every summer. They'll return and keep growing every summer. But there are also some plants that are just called annual plants, and these only have one growing season. An example of an, an annual plant is a marigold. Those are little flowers that you need to plant every spring or summer, and then they die by the end of the season, and then you need to plant new ones the next year. But perennials will return each growing season without you having to do much to it. It's really cool to have perennials in your garden. So, we are going to read the story called The Vegetables We Eat by Gail Gibbons. While we're reading today, I want you to notice and wonder what, where these vegetables are coming from and what different details you're learning about these vegetables. I promise you're going to learn a lot today about the vegetables we eat. Here is our book, The Vegetables We Eat by Gail Gibbons. The Vegetables We Eat by Gail Gibbons. When you're first noticing the title pages, take a look. Look closely. What vegetables do you recognize and notice? Which vegetables are you confused by or look new to you?
Here's some more vegetables. You might notice some new vegetables here. All right, so in this picture, I see, oops, it kind of looks like a farmer's market. And I see lots of the different vegetables labeled with different signs. Look at the vegetables. Vegetables are parts of plants that are, oops, vegetables are parts of plants that are grown to be eaten. Most are annuals. Some are perennials. Remember, we just talked about the words annuals and perennials. Annual means it's just planted for one year and dies at the end of the season. And perennial, perennials mean they come back each season. Which vegetables do you notice in these pictures? It is good for us to eat vegetables. They are nutritious and help keep our bodies strong and healthy. They are tasty too. Wow. I'm noticing all the different ways these characters are eating vegetables in these pictures. We eat vegetables in different ways. This character looks like she's eating vegetables with soup. Another character looks like they're eating vegetables with a dip. Another character looks like they're eating a salad full of vegetables, and the other character looks like they're eating vegetables as a side to the rest of their meal. Wow, look at all these colors. I notice a lot of colors in these beautiful vegetables. Vegetables grow to be different shapes, sizes, and colors. I wonder why all vegetables are not the same shape. I notice how some of those carrots are smaller than the other ones. I wonder why some of these vegetables don't always grow to look exactly the same. Wow, look at this cool illustration to teach us more about these vegetables. The text says at the bottom, botanists group the different kinds of vegetables accordingly, according to the part of the vegetable that is eaten. There are eight groups of vegetables. Wow, eight groups of vegetables. I had no idea there were so many groups. Let's look closely at these pictures to see what type of vegetables. We have leaf vegetables that kind of reminds me of some lettuce. There's bulb vegetables that looks kind of like an onion. A flower bud, I think that's some cauliflower. We've got a root that looks like maybe a radish. A tuber that looks like a potato. Stem looks like some celery. Fruit. Hmm, fruit. I thought this was vegetable. That's a tomato. And seed. That looks like some beans. Some string beans, maybe. Interesting. Leaf vegetables. Oh, wow. Here's some examples of different types of lettuce. I really love how the illustrations have captions so we know what type of lettuce we're looking at. We eat the leaves of these vegetables. Some other leaf vegetables are... Cabbage, spinach, watercress, parsley, and Brussels sprouts. Mm, I love Brussels sprouts. Bold vegetables. White Spanish onion, white Spanish onion, and then wow, there's some people cutting those white Spanish onions. Interesting. Some other onions are yellow globe onion, red globe onion, and sweet Vidalia onion. And some other bulb vegetables look like these scallions or leeks. We eat bulb vegetables that grow beneath the ground. Okay, let's look back at this picture here. I'm noticing that this onion is growing way deep down in the ground. There's its roots. And then it has this long kind of leaf looking thing. But this is the part that we normally eat in our kitchen or cut up. Interesting. Flower bud vegetables. Okay, so we have white snowball cauliflower here, and this is the way people are eating it. So this is how it grows. Notice how there's nice roots in the ground. This is what it looks like when it's picked, and this is what it might look like if you're eating them at your house. Some other cauliflowers. There's cheddar cauliflower, purple head cauliflower, and we also have broccoli. Oh, I love broccoli and artichoke. I don't really like artichokes that much, but maybe you do.
The flower buds of these vegetables are what's eaten. So it's interesting that I hear the word flower because it doesn't really look like a flower to me. But I do kind of understand how it looks like a flower and then there's some leaves around it. I can see why they call it a flower vegetable. Flower buds, excuse me. All right, another group we have is a root vegetable. The root vegetables, this says an early wonder beet. So I guess if it's an early wonder beet, it's growing with roots down here in the ground and it has all these nice long pieces of leaves, it looks like. This is what it looks like when you pick the beets. And here's some other beets, some Detroit dark red beets. And some people eat beet greens, interesting, and red ace beets. The roots of these vegetables are eaten. They grow beneath the ground. So let's go back again and look at this picture about how it kind of reminds me of those onions, how they grow beneath the ground and then you eat the part that looks like a big circle. Some other root vegetables are parsnips. They kind of look like carrots. Oh, there's carrots, radishes, turnips, and rutabaga. I've never eaten rutabaga. Maybe you have. But they all look like they kind of have a similar shape, these three. And then these carrots and parsnips also, I notice, have different shapes. Wow, I never knew there were so many vegetables. All right, tuber vegetables. Here are Kennebec potatoes in the ground. Wow, those are all the way under the ground. Check this out. I notice that those potatoes, there's no part of those potatoes that are above the ground. Look, they're all the way underneath. Interesting. I wonder if they stay underground the whole time when they're growing. That is so interesting. Here's the Kennebec potatoes, and then here's someone who maybe just picked them. Some other root potatoes are yellow Yukon gold potatoes, the red Norland potatoes, russet uh, Burbank potatoes, and purple Peruvian potatoes. What? Purple potatoes? I've never seen purple potatoes. They must grow underground for a long time. They're purple. The edible part of these vegetables, the tuber, grows beneath the ground. Okay, so these pretty much look like different potatoes. One of our last groups, the stem vegetables. The golden self-blanching celery. Oh, this is celery is an annual. Hmm, what's that word annual mean again? Oh, that's right, annual vegetables only grow one time. You plant them and then by the end of the season they're done. You have to plant them again next season. I didn't know there were so many different types of celery. How interesting. I see asparagus and rhubarb are also perennials and they're stem vegetables. So that means they come back each year. The stems of these vegetables are eaten. Some stem veg vegetables are perennials. All right, fruit vegetables. Thank goodness we got to this page because I'm confused. How can it be a fruit and a vegetable? I hope this page teaches me some more. I see lots of beautiful pictures of these different types of tomatoes. We have a best boy tomato. Best boy tomatoes look pretty big over there and they kind of grow, looks like above the ground. There's not growing under the ground. And it kind of reminds me of berries. Maybe that's why they're called fruit vegetables. We've got beef eater tomatoes, sugar plum tomatoes, ultra sweet tomatoes, yellow tomatoes, and cherry tomatoes. Here are some fruit vegetables that we eat. Okay, so when you're eating a tomato, it's called a fruit vegetable. I wonder if it counts for both a fruit and a vegetable that you eat that day. Some other fruit vegetables are eggplant and cucumbers, sweet peppers, hot peppers, zucchini, yellow squash, butternut squash, and pumpkin. So these are all called fruit vegetables. That's so funny. I had no idea they were both fruit and a vegetable, it seems like. They're called a fruit vegetable. That's the group they belong to. All right. And our last group is the seed vegetable. The seed vegetables, here's some examples. Here we have green beans, yellow wax beans, pole beans, lima beans, kidney beans, and navy beans. We eat these, we eat the seeds of these plants. Some seed vegetables grow in pods. Some of the pods are eaten too. Kind of like a string bean. Some other seed vegetables. Okay, here, so here's the seed pod that we eat some seeds sometimes. Here's a picture of people eating the casing around the peas. 
also. Snow peas and corn. What? Corn is a seed vegetable that does not have a pod. It has a husk. In the summertime when you eat corn on the cob, do you ever have to shuck the corn and pull all the husks off and it gets so messy? I usually have to do that job at my house. So you learned some, I learned something new today that corn is also a seed vegetable. I had no idea. How interesting. Wow, this book is really teaching me a lot. I'm going to pause here today because I taught you a lot about the different groups. Oh, there's one more page about soybeans. Then we're going to pause on page 21. We can come back to it tomorrow. But here is the last interesting thing about the groups. Soybeans are a special seed vegetable. They can be used in many ways. Some soybeans are used to make food products. Soybean oil is used to make many non-food items. So, hmm, we've got soy milk, paint, soy sauce, margarine, tofu, soap, cloth, paper, and plastics. Wow! So this vegetable is not only used to eat and make different things, but I also notice it's used to make different things that we don't normally eat. That's so interesting. Wow. Who knew vegetables had so many different jobs and besides nourishing our body? Tomorrow we'll finish the rest of our text. Great job reading along today. I know I wondered and noticed so many things about these beautiful illustrations of all these vegetables. So your job today is to tell me one thing you noticed and one thing you wondered from all of these new groups of vegetables that we learned about today. Super great job reading along, and I hope you enjoyed the text, The Vegetables We Eat, by Gail Gibbons. Thanks for working hard today, my great readers.